Hello, good evening, welcome to another episode. It's a Sunday, by the way, in case you were unsure of the days. If you rely on me to tell you what day it is each day, then today is Sunday. Welcome to another episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. And welcome to my home. Here in, well, my summer home, should I say. I need to change my script around a bit. My summer home in the Costa Calada region of southern Spain. We're popping to the port of Puerto de Madron. The port of Madron we're going to this evening with some friends for a little bite to eat. We're going, I believe, to an Italian restaurant, which I'm sure will be lovely. And then we're going to... Oh, where are we going, anyone? El Faro is where we're going, which is it's a bit of it's kind of an ice cream parlor. But El Faro is Spanish for the lighthouse and it's right next to a little lighthouse. It's up on the cliff. It's lovely in the, uh, the Port of Matheron. So if you get a chance to check that out, well, I'd highly recommend it. We'll more than likely do a couple of little check in videos, George and I later. So if you want to see what it's like, then check out our social media. Did I mention we've got a bunch of social media, Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. They're all called Brett's Old Time Radio Show. If you could give us a little follow, oh, wow, that'd be nice. Uh, well, look, thank you for joining us once again for our regular late night visit to our studio archives of old time radio shows at, right here at my summer home on the south coast of Spain. I'm Brett. I'm your host for our night time podcast. Oh, George has arrived. All right. Yeah. Are you OK? Yeah, I'm good. I've just been telling our lovely listener that we're going to El Faro later and we'll probably do a little check in video to show people what it's like. Is that OK? Embarrassing. Oh, uh, right. OK. We've got a supporter page, patreon.com forward slash Sunday Night Mystery. If you get a minute or two to check that out, well, oh, well that would be really, really good. That would be great. Yeah. Send me money. St. George money. <laughs> Time now for a Sunday night adventure with a man called X. This was first broadcast on the 23rd of November, 1947. It's called Report from the Arctic. You're twice as sure with two great names, Frigidaire and General Motors. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, intrigue, romance, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. Frigidaire presents Herbert Marshall as Ken Thurston, the man called X. Oh, good morning, Ken. Been trying to locate you. Yeah, that's what Miss Brooks said, Chief. I told her to go ahead and put that call through. Oh, good. Any idea what it's all about? No, he wouldn't talk to anybody but you. And he sounded pretty excited. Who is he, Ken? I never heard of him. Dr. Kupczynski? A scientist, Chief. Meteorologist. I met him a number of years ago. He's been up to the... Arctic for the last 18 months or so in charge of an expedition. Well, he's back now. He phoned from up the coast at Plymouth. Plymouth, eh? I can't figure any reason he'd have for calling us. Nor can I, Chief, but I do know it takes something out of the ordinary to get Kuptinsky excited. Wondering if this ties in with some of his theories. What theories, Ken? Well, he's thought for a long time that the Arctic region had possibilities of being kind of overlooked. You mean as a strategic area? No, more than that. He's always claimed that this frozen north idea is all wet that actually the country up there has enough natural resources to support big industry, colonization. Mm. Matter of fact, that's the reason... It... Uh, oh, just a second, Ken. Yes, Miss Brooks? I have Mr. Thurston's call to Plymouth now. Oh, fine, fine. Here he is, Ken. Thanks. Ken Thurston speaking. This is Dr. Kupchinski, Mr. Thurston. How are you, Doctor? Mr. Thurston, you must come up here immediately. Oh, what's the trouble? Well, uh, as you may know, we arrived back here from the Arctic this morning. Uh-huh. When I prepared to disembark, I discovered that all of our reports, all the data from a year and a half's work had disappeared. Oh. Furthermore, my geologist, Dr. Roberts, was found dead in his cabin. Mr. Thurston, I have not been able to determine the cause. No. All right, Doctor. Well, I find you. I'm on board the Argonaut, berthed at the Old North Dock in Plymouth Harbor. Okay. See you in about uh, four hours. So long, Doctor. Well, what's the story, Ken? 
I'll know better after I've seen him. Well, now wait. Uh, maybe we don't even figure in this. Nobody kills a man and steals scientific reports just because of the paper shortage. Yes, but Ken, I... So long, Chief. Oh, Miss Brooks. Uh, yes, Mr. Kirsten. Uh, get me a plane reservation to Boston right away. I'll pick it up at the field. And, uh, have a car waiting at the other end. Yes, sir. In case you want me later this evening, I'll be on board the Argonaut at Plymouth Harbor. Plane to Boston, car there, Plymouth this evening. All right, Mr. Thurston. All right. See you later. But, I mean, you're not going to be out of town over Thanksgiving, are you? I don't know. Why? Well, I... I just wondered. Oh. You're, um... You're wearing your hair different, aren't you? Well, yes, I am. I didn't think you'd notice. Nice. I'll, um... I'll call you from Plymouth. So long. Goodbye, Kent. Mr. Thurston. Hey! Wait for me, Mr. Thurston. Hey, on, Zelschman. How many times have I told well, you... Well, don't say it, Mr. Thurston. You'll only be sorry if you do. I will, will no, I? Because, after all, I only came here to invite you to lunch. To what? Oh, sure. I found a new place. Ah, luscious food. Wonderful martinis. No, no. I've got to catch a plane. Some other time, maybe. I would... Uh... Uh, thanks anyway, Pagan. But in this case, uh, maybe you could loan me five dollars so I... Mr. Thurston, wait! Oh, well. Uh... Hmm, wait a minute. Miss Brooks, what did you say was the name of that boat? Hello? Anybody aboard? Hmm. Uh, laboratory C. Oh, I beg your pardon. Uh, never mind. Come on in. Thanks. I was looking for Dr. Kuczynski. Well, I'm not he. Well, no. You're Miss, um... Caldwell. Dr. Caldwell. Oh, well, my name's Ken Thurston. Miss Caldwell? <laughs> Apparently, you're one of those men who objects to a woman becoming a scientist. Oh, no, no. I never object to any becoming woman. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm sorry I was rude, Mr. Thurston. Dr. Kupchinski's ashore somewhere. He's due back any time now. Thanks. Don't let me interrupt what you're doing there. The microscope? Oh, no, it doesn't matter. I was running a flow gene count. I'll have to start over again anyway. You've got a nice laboratory here. Yes, it is. I'm a little tired of looking at it, though, after 18 months. Oh, you one of the members of the expedition? Official bacteriologist. I've worked with the Stedman Institute for the last five years. Well, Stedman, that's the layout that financed this trip, isn't it? Yes. Mm. It's located here in Plymouth, a few blocks up on Water Street. I think that's where Dr. Kupchinski went. Anybody else on board? Oh, just the photographer, I believe, George Smith. Most of the scientists and the crew live here. They were anxious to get ashore. Yes, except, of course, Dr. Roberts. Yes. His death was most unfortunate. Any idea what caused it? I think you'd better discuss that with Dr. Kupchinski, Mr. Thurston. Oh, I intend to. By the way, did Roberts have a laboratory of his own? Yes, it's on the other side of the deck. I see. Well, I'd better not bother any longer, Miss Caldwell. Maybe Dr. Kupinski can come back by now. Mr. Thurston, is there any special reason why you refuse to call me Dr. Caldwell? Oh, sure, a very special reason. Anybody can be a doctor, but only one person out of every two can be a woman. See you later, Miss Caldwell. Hey, Mr. Thurston. Oh, Pagon, no. Well, I've decided you will most likely need me up here, so I won't take no for an answer. Yeah. You never have yet. Now, of course, I didn't want to intrude while you were making boo with that luscious little damsel. Pagan, that luscious little damsel is a learned scientist. Oh, she is? Yes. In fact, mm. the only one I've ever known learned enough to be able to use a microscope without attaching the eyepiece. Shelves full of all kinds of bottles. Little hammers, steel plates. Hey, this is a very funny-looking joint, Mr. X. It's a geology lab, Pagon. Dr. Roberts used these hammers and plates to break up rock, rock samples so he could look at them under the microscope here, you see? But why would the doctor want to break up rocks? A different kind of doctor. Oh. Roberts was a geologist. Oh. Move over. You're standing in the light. Oh. Hey, hey, can you see anything yet uh, through that little microphone? Oh. I wonder if that... Uh, maybe we ought to blow out of here, Mr. X, before this Roberts guy comes in and catches us. Wait a minute now. 
Sure, so that's it. What's it? Coal dust. You mean like they burn in furnaces? Is that all? That's all. But it may be enough. Good. Well, then why don't we scramble hey, for... Hey, no. you can forget about Dr. Roberts. He was found dead in this room this morning. Oh, well, in that case, we don't... Dead in this room? <laughs> now, I know I'm going to get out of here, but... All right, you're both covered. Don't move. It's a, thirst. it's a ghost. No, no, Peyton. I think it's just a photographer. You George Smith? Yeah, that's right. Suppose you give me a good reason for breaking into Robert's lab? Oh, I've got a good reason, Mr. Smith, but I think I'd rather tell Dr. Kupchinsky. Then why didn't you tell him in the first place he's up forward in his cabin? Good. Let's go make sure he's alive. Huh? Any reason why he shouldn't be alive? No, but then when you come right down to it, there's no reason why... Dr. Roberts shouldn't be alive. And so I really must apologize again for the way Smith acted, Mr. Thurston, but you can understand how overwrought all of us are. Oh, sure, Dr. Kapinski, forget it. Thank you, Mr. Thurston. I've just talked with Dr. Stedman at the Institute. He has the results of the autopsy. What did he find out? Dr. Roberts was poisoned with cancidine. Cancidine is a pretty unusual poison for an amateur to know about. Well, this whole thing is unusual, Mr. Thurston. Do you know of anything specially valuable that Roberts may have discovered on the trip? I couldn't say. We each worked separately, took notes and data in our own branch of science. Dr. Roberts was not a very talkative man. Uh, he collected rock samples, specimens, didn't he? Oh, yes. They're stored in canvas sacks in the hold. They're useless without aerial maps, notes, data sheets. Those were all stolen with the rest of the reports. Mm, would you say the expedition itself was a success? Oh, beyond my wildest hopes, Mr. Thurston. Why, there's a whole new frontier up there. Well, well, this overcrowded world could use a new frontier. Uh, yes, indeed. There are vast areas for agriculture, fishing grounds, water power, all kinds of possibilities. Uh, and it's ours, our country's. Or was until these reports disappeared. I know. Whoever has them could get a pretty fancy price for them from some other country, eh? Yes. And with Dr. Roberts' poison. That is what has been uppermost in my mind. What's that? Let me in quick, Mr. Thurston. Somebody's shooting at somebody out there in the deck. See anybody, Pagan? That's shooting with somewhere on board. Why, Dr. Caldwell. That, 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 that woman, Mr. Thurston. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Huh? Quiet, everybody. Mr. Thurston, somebody's coming. Quiet, will you? All right. Come on in. You're covered. Well, Thurston, they say we both have guns now. Smith. Mr. Smith. What's all the shooting about, Smith? Stop shaking, man. You're as nervous as a cat. I... I saw somebody coming out of my photo lab. The poisoner. I fired a couple of shots, but he got away. The lab's been turned inside out. You, you didn't see who it was? I'm not sure. He looked an awful lot like... like Dr. Stedman. What? Oh, no. Stedman, huh? The head of the Institute. <laughs> Everybody around here is doctor. Dr. This and Dr. That, but, but nobody's a real one. If you mean a medical doctor, Mr. Zellschmidt, then Dr. Stedman does happen to be a real one. He's quite a well-known toxicologist. Toxy what? There you go. A toxicologist is a man who specializes in the study of poison. Continue with Frigidaire's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Returning this morning from a year and a half's work in the Arctic, the scientists aboard the Argonaut found ill fortune awaiting them in Plymouth Harbor. The geologist of the expedition, Dr. Roberts, was found dead from poisoning. And all of the expedition's reports have disappeared. And now Ken and Pagan and Dr. Chukchinsky are on an expedition of their own down in the dark hold of the vessel. That makes 14 sacks we've opened already, Mr. Thurston. And what do we find? <laughs> Rocks. There you go. That's exactly what I expected to find. Now, drag the next one over. It's just as I feared, Mr. Thurston. These sample sacks are identified only by code numbers. They're useless without Dr. Roberts' report. Maybe not entirely useless, Dr. Kutinsky. View of what I found in Roberts' laboratory. Hey, this one is uh, not as heavy as the rest of them. Huh? Let's have a look. Hold the flashlight, Pagan. Mr. Thurston, now we've got black rock. But it, that looks like... Yeah. 
Looks like anthracite coal. Well, that's the most valuable discovery of the whole expedition. Coal. Available for heat, power, smelting. As it is now, we know nothing of its location. It's a little hard to understand why you didn't know about this sooner, Doctor. Weren't you in charge of the expedition? Yes, but each of us worked individually, and each was to make his separate report to Dr. Stedman here at the Institute. My own particular field is meteorology. Dr. Caldwell's bacteriology mm -hmm. and so on. And Roberts worked by himself? Exactly. He flew one of the helicopters, took his own notes and samples, made his own maps. None of us had wait, any wait, idea. Wait, 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 quiet. Yes? I don't hear anything, Mr. Thurston. Just water dripping. Would you be quiet. Hmm? Behind these boxes, somewhere about here. <laughs> Sounds like a little clock. Here. Grab the other side of that box. Now. Right. Mr. Thurston, look. Yeah. An electric circuit and a timer. It's connected to that drum of gasoline. Uh, those briefcases beside it, the reports. Just a second. Wait till I disconnect this. The Roberts report there, Doctor? No, just a minute. No, no, it isn't. I see. Well, at least we know now what it's all about. Well, this timing gadget's pretty unusual. Any idea what it is? Well, let me see. Oh, yes. Yes, I know what it is, Mr. Thurston. It's an automatic control used in meteorology. Mr. Thurston. Hope we didn't get tired waiting, Peg, huh? A whole hour you leave me alone in this dead man's laboratory. I was starting to get me bejeebies. Here, unwrap that other package. Where'd you get those bundles, Mr. Egg? From Dr. Stedman, over at the Institute. Stedman? Oh, you mean the taxi, taxi, taxi... Uh... Quiet, you're not in Times Square. Huh? I mean that poisonous guy. Well, did, did you make him confess, maybe? No, not quite. Matter of fact, he says he didn't kill Roberts. <laughs> He's lying. Maybe. But it's true that any one of this bunch could have taken the cancer dean from the storeroom. Hey, it's a brush and a can of paint. Phosphorescent paint. Si shines in the dark. I want you to paint this with it. Oh, sure, just leave it to... Hey, uh, Mr. X, take it away. Yeah, it's not going to bite you. Hurry up and get it painted. I'll see you later. Mr. Thurston, you're not going to leave me here alone with that... with that thing? Sure. What reason do you have to be scared of it? You didn't kill anybody this morning? So long, Peg, huh? I don't get it, Mr. X. Already we've looked in three of these lifeboats, and all we find is the same thing. Nothing. Well, what did you expect to find? What well, I don't know, but not just nothing. Here, Pagan, let's have a look inside this one. Besides, don't even know where we're looking for. We are not looking for anything now. We found it. Huh? Found what? Dr. Roberts' report. Hold the light while I get a hold of the briefcase. But, Mr. Thurston... Why would anybody stick it out here in one of those life oh, Why not? As long as they hadn't had a chance yet to sneak it ashore. Ah, okay, I got it. Turn off the light. Good. Then let's cry. I'm getting the creeps. Not so fast, Pagan. We've still got to substitute this thing for the briefcase. Mr. X, do not drop the thing out here in the dark. Be quiet. There. Doesn't look so bad when you know what it is. <laughs> I know what it is, and it still scares me. Hold the canvas a second while I put it in the bottom of the boat. So, well, that's that. Now I think it's about time you made a little social call. Oh, on that Dr. Caldwell dame, I suppose. Oh, no, I got a date with her later. Come on, Pagan. Let's go talk to Dr. Lubczynski. <laughs> And as you can see, Robert's discovery would have given the final boost to any plan for colonization. So the loss is tragic. And the thief is not only clever, but utterly without scruple. Oh, I'd say more ruthless than clever, Doctor. Ruthless enough to put a personal greed above the chance for thousands of people to open a new frontier, build a new land. Wait, I think somebody's coming. Yes, but how can a, such a person be exposed? What do you plan to do, Mr. Thurston? Why, well, nothing at all, Doctor. And you're going to sit back and wait till the guilty person decides to confess. Come on in, Miss Caldwell. 
You mean her. Mr. Thurston, her. Here's your coffee, Doctor. Sorry, I didn't know anyone else was here. I only brought one cup. Oh, thank you, Dr. Caldwell. I can make more if you'd like a cup, Mr. Thurston. Oh, no, no, no. Perhaps, uh, Pagon might like some, though. Oh, no, no, not me. I never touch the stuff. Oh. Well, I hope... I hope you won't mind if I drink it in front of you. <laughs> Coffee's one of my worst vices. Stop! Stop! Don't touch it! Well, why not? Mr. Thurston, you're not going to sit there and, and let her poison him right in front of our eyes? What? Pagon's got the goods on you, Miss Caldwell. You may as well confess. Sure, start talking, babe. Confess? Confess to what? I haven't anything to confess to. I know, but it'll make Pagon happy. Huh? But, but, but... No, no stay away from oh, me. That's what we've been waiting no. for. It can't be you, Robert. You're dead. I didn't mean to kill you. Yeah, who is it? No, please. Your high-strung photographer, to, George please, Smith. Robert. The man Stay who killed Dr. Roberts. Roberts! Mr. Thurston, he jumped overboard. He's going to get away. No, oh, no, Pega. I've had the police guarding the wharf for the last three hours. Well, that's that. But what was the matter? What scared him that way? <laughs> you should have seen it. It was mainly a guilty conscience, helped along quite a bit by a plaster death mask of Dr. Roberts. Death mask? Yeah, I got it from Stedman earlier this evening. Put it in the lifeboat where Smith had hidden the stolen report. Oh, then you found it? But why were you certain George Smith was guilty? I wasn't certain. But since he did all the photographic work, he was the most likely person to have found out what Roberts was doing. Well, I think I could use that coffee now, Miss Colbert. Well, thank heaven the reports were saved. There'll be a new land, Mr. Thurston. A new frontier up there in the Arctic. Yes, Dr. Kupczynski. And let's hope the pioneers who go there will carry the same vision. A sailing ship brought to Plymouth Harbor over 300 years ago. A belief in the courage of human freedom and in the dignity of the human spirit belief in the right of a man to dream and to sow and to reap what he's sown and in the right of free choice in the God to whom he offers thanksgiving. <laughs> Frigidaire star, Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. Next week is a, <coughs> pardon me, is a special occasion for us because it will mark the 100th broadcast of our sponsor. The 100th consecutive week the Frigidaire has enjoyed bringing radio entertainment into your home. Our story will be Checkmate in Tahiti, and I feel sure you'll enjoy it. As usual, Leon Velasco will be along as Pagan Zellschmidt. So join us, won't you, for our 100th broadcast next week when I return as the man called X. Good night. Bridget Air's Man Called X is directed by Jack Johnstone, with music composed by Johnny Green and conducted tonight by Al Sendry. The story was written by Les Crutchfield. So until next week, same time, same station... This is Wendell Niles speaking for Frigid Air, made only by General Motors. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious, and any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. Remember, every Sunday night brings you two popular dramatic shows on CBS, The Man Called X and The Adventures of Sam Spade. Yes, for the best in entertainment, Tune in and stay tuned in to CBS, the biggest show in town. Friends, have you ever wished that you could send food or clothing to help some family in Europe live through the winter? CARE will do it for you. That's C-A-R-E, the cooperative relief organization endorsed by President Truman, Herbert Hoover, and General Eisenhower. Ask about CARE at your local Western Union or Railway Express office. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed our latest adventure with The Man Called X. And don't forget, we're going to be back tomorrow with a bit of comedy from Hancock's Half Hour. Tony Hancock and all his I chums. I love comedy.
Yeah, I know. It's funny, isn't it, comedy? It's really funny. Yeah, that's going to be going live at 5pm GMT, although... Is it or is it going to be late? I was going to say, it might be late, like tonight's episode is, because here, here in Spain, it's I'm recording this at 6.36pm. Oh, that's I hope you enjoyed awful. the Formula One today. It was now... It was amazing. Mine and, George doesn't watch it, which is ridiculous, I know. George reminds me a little bit of Lando Norris. Let me know if you watch one of our videos, if you think George does look a little bit like Lando. Better looking version, of course. Of course. But I think George reminds me a bit of Lando. And I was a bit disappointed today because Lando almost won the race. Should have won it, really. I, yeah, I, think he, I think he would have overtaken Piastri anyway. Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, don't forget, we've got a supporter page, George and I, patreon.com forward slash Sunday Night Mystery. And uh, look, thanks for listening. Uh, we'll see them tomorrow, won't we, George? Maybe a bit later. But... <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, we'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week. See you tomorrow. Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Love you. Bye.